This is Blue Star Warrior 1 here. All the glory goes to Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. And this is the first book of Adam and Eve, the Forgotten Books of Eden. And Lord Jesus Christ is coming soon. And we're going to be reading chapter 24. And the title is, A Vivid Prophecy of the Life and Death of Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All grace and glory to God. All grace and glory to God. Then the merciful God, good and lover of men, looked at Adam and Eve, and at their blood, which they had held up as an offering to him, without an order from him for so doing. But he wondered at them, and accepted their offerings. And God sent from his presence a bright fire that consumed their offerings. He smelled the sweet savor of their offering and showed them mercy. Then came the word of, of God to Adam and said to him, O Adam, as you have shed your blood, so will I shed my own blood when I become flesh of your descendants. And as you died, O Adam, so will, so also will I die. And as you build an altar, so shall I so also will I make for you an altar of the earth. And as you offered your blood on it, so also will I offer my blood on an altar on the earth. And as you sh sued for forgiveness through that blood, so also will I make my forgiveness of sins, make my blood forgiveness of sins and erase transgressions in it. And now, behold, I have accepted your offering, O Adam, but the days of the covenant in which I have bound you are not fulfilled. When they are fulfilled, then will I bring you back into the garden. Now, therefore, strengthen your heart, and when sorrow comes over you, make me an offering, and I will be favorable to you. Now, what is uh, what's talking about here? Now, in the in the last chapter, Adam and Eve, they built an altar out of stones, and they offered their blood on that altar and to God because they made a sacrifice. It was the first sacrifice ever made to God, and it was the blood of Adam and Eve. And God saw it, as it says here, and, he, and God is an all-consuming fire, so he sent his fire down, his heavenly fire down, and consumed their blood. And it had a sweet smell, sweet savor of their offering, which was a, a sign of his mercy and his love for them. And he, he told them that he'll come down, and he did. He came down. He, was, he came down as his son, Lord Jesus Christ, who was born of a virgin. He lived a holy, unrighteous, just life. He never sinned, not even once. He was tempted, but he never sinned. And then he offered himself on an altar. That cross was an altar of sacrifice. He sacrificed himself, shed his blood, and he shed a lot of blood. He had nails driven through his hands and feet, and hands and feet down when he was put in the bite base. He was whipped with so many lashes. He was beaten, abused, and everything else. And he had a crown of thorns stabbed right on top of his head. And could you imagine all the torment and torture and everything that Lord Jesus Christ went for went through for us? And he died, and he shed his blood, just like Adam and Eve shed their blood on that on on their altar, and his altar was an alt, alt his blood his shedding of his blood was shed so that the for forgiveness so people could go to heaven. So, if say you got um. You got Cynthia here, and Cynthia accepted Lord Jesus Christ as her Savior and loves him with all her heart and soul. She's covered in his blood that he shed on, on, his, on that cross, which was an altar. He shed his blood, and she's covered with it. And so, say Cynthia gets hit by a bolt of lightning and dies. She, she goes straight up to heaven, because she's covered in that blood. She is covered in the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. But say you have Bud over here. But, on the other hand, it rejects it and gets killed in a tornado. He's not covered in Lord Jesus Christ's precious blood. And he's going to go to the lake of fire. There is only one way to heaven. 
Lord Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And it states right here. They, that Adam and Eve were asking for forgiveness uh, for, for their sins through the blood, their blood. And God says that his blood will be the forgiveness of sins and erase transgressions in it. So it will erase all your transgressions, all your sins. Everything that you've done wrong in your whole entire life will be erased and forgiven. That doesn't mean you should go around sinning. So you got Lizzie here and she keeps... Uh, sinning and thinks that, oh, I'm covered in the blood, I'm forgiven. I can go over and uh, gamble and steal uh, some things out of the local pet store and do whatever I want when that that's, that's his sinning. It's just living in sin. She doesn't truly believe that Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for her sins or she would stop because she would love Lord Jesus Christ with all her heart and soul. She wouldn't want to gamble. She wouldn't want to steal. She wouldn't want to do those things. She wouldn't want to cheat on her husband lots. She wouldn't want to do any of those things. She would turn away from it and and realize I've done wrong and ask God for, for forgiveness and then turn away from it and step away from it. So when Lizzie dies and she still she believes in Lord Jesus Christ but she continues constantly to sin that is going to be um, a decision between her and God Almighty and Lord Jesus Christ on her day of judgment. So say she died driving to the casino. She ran a red light and got hit by another car and coming car and died. Let's just say that much. We all accidentally probably run a red light once, you know, in our lives. So, may not mean to. So, she runs a red light going to the casino and dies. And... She believes that Lord Jesus Christ is her Savior, but she's a lukewarm Christian because she continues to live in sin. Where is she going to go? That is God's decision. So, it does say that uh, that lukewarm Christians, he's going to say, I wish you were hot or cold, but since you're lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. you got to think about that. And I'm going to leave that on you, the listener, to think what does that mean for you? Where do you think Lizzie went? I'm not going to answer that one. So, and yes, that's you don't want to tempt. You don't want to tempt God, and you know. But that is your choice, and remember that we all willfully sin, including myself. There is no one that is not sinless. So, say you have Roselia here who believes that believes in Lord Jesus Christ, loves him, and, and walks in him, but believes that she's sinless. And so that even though she lied to her husband about spending the $20 on ham instead of cheese and hides that fact until he finds out later on that what's in the refrigerator is ham, not cheese. Uh, you, know, you know, white lie. And then she thinks that she's still sinless. That's wrong. She is a sinner. And she has to accept that. Every single person is a sinner. And if someone says they are not a sinner, uh, in reality, they're not accepting Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Because why did he die on the cross for our sins? If, if we weren't sinners, then why did he die on the cross for? Think about it. So, she's got <laughs> backwards thinking there. And there are people who think that they're not sinners and... They're not. They're nothing wrong. And then you got Justin here, who thinks he can work his way to heaven. He can get there by working his way to heaven. And he works a hard job, and building toilets. He makes toilets. He's a toilet inventor, and he works hard building and making toilets and running his factory. And he makes beautiful rainbow, lavender, pink, golden, and all kinds of different designs of of that con of that toilet. <laughs> Including oval and uh, round shaped bowls. <laughs> so, and he thinks that because he's the greatest inventor in to of toilets, and he may give me gives all these people around the whole entire globe a toilet in their home, <laughs> that he's helping out and that he's earned his way to heaven. And he believes in Lord Jesus Christ, but he believes that he can work his way there through his invention of toilets. 
uh, you cannot work your way to heaven. Uh, there's no way. I mean, when you're a born again follower of Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to want to do the works. You're going to want to, you know, preach the gospel and read the Holy Word and do those things because you love Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart and soul. But you can't work your way to heaven. And so no matter how many hours you spend, spend doing works of any kind, no matter if it's doing charity works or doing ministry, it's that it, it counts, but it, it's not going to get you to heaven. The only way you get in heaven is believing in the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart and soul and loving him with all your heart and soul. So, so where do you think Justin's going to go? Uh, it is how things are. And you have to take all this to God Almighty in prayer for and ask him for wisdom, knowledge, understanding. And come to your own conclusions. Don't blindly follow someone, any anyone, me or uh, some other person on the blocks. Because they can lead you anywhere because you'd be making them their idol. You can't make anyone your idol. And so say you have this other person named Shark and he idolizes his pastor. And he believes every single word his pastor says to 100%, never questions it, never takes it to prayer. And worships his pastor. And and he loves Lord Jesus Christ. He goes to church. But he worships his pastor. And listens to everything he says. And then when the pastor states something. That is not in the Bible scripture. To accept. To say. Um, we're going to have a person. Who used to be. One uh, side of the road. And is now another side of the road. You know what I mean. So. It's a lion dressed up as a lioness, let's just say that much. And that lion, that lion dressed up as a lioness is going to preach. And he accepts that completely, thinking that's, that's right. And doesn't question it and doesn't take it into the Lord, Lord, Lord in prayer. He's going to perish for lack of wisdom because he's following a pastor to a point where he believes everything he says. No, I'm not going to say I agree with that at all. But what I'm saying is you have to take it to God in prayer and not idolize him. So where do you think Shark's going to go with his idolization of that pastor? He's putting the pastor above God. And that is incorrect. So, well, I'll be back as the Lord leads. I hope you enjoyed listening to this. And uh, please take it and take what I tell you, what I read to you or what I say in my videos to God in prayer and ask him for guidance, wisdom, and understanding. And please read God's holy word. And ask him to fill you with the Holy Spirit. And guide you and to lead you to wisdom and knowledge and understanding. You don't have to get the first book of Adam and Eve. But if you want to, you can. It's on Amazon. I would prefer you say, read the, 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 holy, holy, the holy Bible. Uh, most common is, is most common and the best one is the King James. But if you can find it and afford it. Uh, the Ethiopian Bible is has way more books. I can't remember how many there is, but there's way more than the 66 books that are in the uh, King James. I don't think the first book of Adam and Eve uh, is in there, though. I only own the illustrated version of the Ethiopian Bible. Uh, so I haven't been able to get my hands on the original Ethiopian Bible uh, due to... Uh, the, well, bad reasons, but um, the old uh, monetary system. <laughs> so I'll be back as the Lord leads.